Hi, Tom Wagner here. I thought you might want to know who bred up the green zebra. This variety has been around now for over 40 years. The breeding work started back in the late 50s and 60s when I collected varieties like Evergreen and Glamour and some unknown uh, striped variety that I got out of the USDA. But this thing is uh, ubiquitous as a heirloom tomato. You're going to see how beautiful green color that is inside. There's a little stem star, beautiful green flesh beautiful green and amber light yellow green skin beautiful interior flesh color and so if you have a chance to get a green zebra tomato think of me when you take a bite of this very tangy tomato look at this tomato this is a variety i bred up a number of years ago called the pick the olympic gold dwarf I'm going to show you how I make a cross. Isn't that a beautiful fruit on a dwarf plant? People ask me all the time, how do you make crosses, Tom? Well, here we go. Here's the flower I'm going to emasculate as the female part of this cross. So, gently pulling that anthracone off. This is what a lot of people have to learn the hard way. And I'm demonstrating this because I think people need to know how somebody who's been doing this for 60 years does it with such ease. Lots of pollen on this variety. The male parent here is one I'm calling Chris Todd. And it's a combination of the Goliath Cluster and the Verde Rolado green zebra type. And look at all the pollen there. Hope you can see that. Now this is kind of a critical part here. Getting that pollen right on the end of the brush. I like to use the fine artist brushes, the real fine tip. I can see the pollen right on the end of the brush. And I put it right on the end of the pistol, the sticky part is called the stigma. So I'm getting enough pollen on there, almost a chicken fried take covering. Once I get enough pollen on there, I know it's not going to be able to accept any more pollen, so I don't have to worry about cross contamination from bees or anything that bring extra pollen on. So I got each of those pretty well coated, so those have been hybridized. Now I'm going to write the tag so I don't win it with cross. So this is number 83, so I put down 83. Then I put the male symbol of the circle with the arrow on it, and then the date, so today's date is 9-13. On the other side I put the code for the female, 105. In this case, I did one bud, so one B, and then the international symbol for female. I'm applying the tag to the inflorescence of this particular tomato. So then I'll just look for these in about uh, six to eight weeks. Just to give you an idea of, of uh, the amount of work I do, here are some crosses that failed this last summer here. All of those I made across but no fruit whatsoever. But good news, I got plenty enough of these tags here. Each one of those represents a cluster of fruits where I made the hybrid. So I have at least 300 different hybrids made just this past summer from uh, the end of June through July. The variety that I just named just now, they're called the Brady Bunch, it's one of those blue tomatoes where the light hits the fruit and turns it blue, has extra uh, uh, the anthocyanin that makes it uh, important on our diet. Isn't that a pretty tomato? Flaming Burst. It's uh, a dwarf tomato plant I bred up, I call it shadow boxing. You notice how the light mediates the uh, skin quite blue, the anthocyanin mediation is really working there. But what I really like about it is the coloration as it ripened. It has all the odd color from the green zebra type stripe to the beautifully colored red and blue tomatoes, especially where it's in the shadows of the of the of the vine. Green, green, green Bay Packers, yes. And it's a yellow tomato with a little bit of a green uh, stripe to it yet. Very distinctive flavor. Where 
where potatoes come from? Well, here's the potato berry. Most people don't realize that potatoes originated from a seed inside a potato berry.